In the previous part, we've created an Amazon Web Services account. We'll now continue from that point. Use your email address and the password you previously chose in order to log into your account. After making sure the I am a returning user ready button is checked, click on the sign in button. Wait a bit for the page to load and after it loaded, click on the EC2 option located at the upper left corner. This action leads us to a general overview page. Our main interest here is the Instances link located in the menu to the left since it will redirect us to a list of servers we launched. Another way to reach the Instances page is to click on the Running Instances link under the Resources Overview. After we launch a server, the number here will change from 0 to 1. Below, you can see a key pairs link and security groups to the right. We'll encounter those two later in this video. There's not much on this general overview page to play with, but you'll feel more comfortable with it the more you'll manage your server. With that understood, you can click on either the Instances link or the Running Instances link in order to go to the list of our servers. Since we have not yet created an instance, reaching that page will give us the option to launch a new instance. You can also click on the blue Launch Instance button. I'll show you the long way and click on Instances. You can check out the Getting Started guide if you want to. When finished, click the Launch Instance button. This list contains all the instances that are available to launch. This tutorial has its focus on Microsoft Windows Server 2012, so we'll scroll down the page until we find it. We also want the free service, so we'll look for the free tier eligible banner. There it is. As you can see, this is the server we're interested in and it has the free tier eligible banner. It is important not to confuse the server with another servers that are not included in the free service. Notice these servers don't include the free tier eligible banner. So triple check you choose the correct server and click on the corresponding select button to its right. Shortly after, we'll choose the free server type, marked again by a green free tier eligible banner. When you have your mouse over this banner, notice you can click on the learn more link. You should explore what's inside of it by yourself. When you're ready, make sure you chose the free option, just as shown in the video, and click on the next button. There are some options in this page which I do not recommend changing unless you really know what you're doing. I do recommend clicking the next button though. The current page displays a very important notification stating we can use up to 30 GB of storage size when choosing the free service. Any size beyond 30 GB results in payment. There's also the learn more link which you should click on and read the usage eligibility and restrictions. Last thing in this page is the delete on termination checkbox. An active server has four possible states. One of them is terminate. That is server removal. Keeping the checkbox checked allows to delete all of the terminated server storage. You may keep this option checked. Now click on next. In this step you are required to grant a name to your server by writing it in the value field. You can read further more about it if you click on the learn more link. After you've given a name to your server, click on next. We are now requested for security groups. We'll create a new security group allowing users to connect our server on different protocols. First, we'll enter a name for the security groups we're about to create such as Custom Security Group 1. Second, click on the Add Rule button and select the HTTP option from the drop-down list. 
Repeat this action to add the HTTPS protocol. Now click on the blue Review and Launch button to move on. This page presents a summary of all the settings for our instance. Make sure the summary presented to you is the same as the one in this video, then click on Launch. We have now reached a very important step in the instance launching process. In this window, select the Create a new key pair option from the drop-down menu and enter some name in the key pair name field. This could be your name or anything else you want to. It is important you'll read the message in the blue text frame. It is saying you should save the file we're about to download in a safe place since you will not be able to download it again after this step. Therefore, click on the Download Keeper button and save it in a safe place on your computer. After we save the file, we can click on Launch Instances and wait a little bit until our instance will finish launching. In the meanwhile, you should click on Create Billing Alerts and scan through the various options. That is just to make sure you weren't charged so far and for the opportunity to create billing alerts that automatically email you when charges reach a threshold you define. Finally, click on the Services button in the top left side of the upper menu and choose the EC2 option. We're now back to the general overview management page. We can see we have one running instance. We also have some storage setup, a defined security group, etc. Now let's click on the instances link located in the left menu to view a list of our instances. This page shows us our running instances. A single click on our instance show some details about it in the lower half part of the screen. The public IP field shows the server's IP address which is used to access the server. You can also notice the security groups field shows the security group we defined earlier in this video. You can now scroll through the details and look for details that might interest you. That is it! You've created a server of your own. Good job! In the next part, we'll see how to connect and set up the instance we've created. Goodbye for now and thank you for watching.